In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we take up episode 71, The Mark of Gideon. Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of Trekking Through Compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 71, The Mark of Gideon. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode The Mark of Gideon, which aired on January 11th, 1969, and occurred on Stardate 5423.4, Story Synopsis. In an attempt to establish diplomatic relations with the planet Gideon, Kirk beams down to the sensor-shielded planet using coordinates supplied by the Gideon Ambassador Hoden. Gideon has refused to let any ambassadors beam down or to permit any sensor scans, but has indicated to the Federation that their planet is a virtual paradise. However, they agree to let Kirk beam down alone. As Kirk materializes, he finds himself on the transporter pad aboard the Enterprise. To his great surprise, he appears alone, and there is no sign of the crew. After noticing a bruise on his arm... Kirk encounters a girl named Adona. Adona denies any knowledge of how she got there or what is going on. She tells Kirk her last memory is of being in an overcrowded auditorium struggling for air and how wonderful it is to have such freedom of movement. Back aboard the real Enterprise, Spock is attempting to determine why Ambassador Hoden denies the fact that Kirk has ever been beamed down. His attempts to obtain authorization to search for Kirk are foiled when Starfleet bureaucrats insist that he contact <coughs> Federation diplomats in the Department of Planetary Treasuries and vice treaties, rather, and vice versa. After beaming up and down Hoden's assistant, Krodak, from the council chamber to test the transporter, Hoden refuses to allow Spock to beam down, despite the fact that they have previously agreed to do so. Meanwhile, on a deserted Enterprise, Odona tells Kirk that there is no place on her planet which is not filled with people and that the inhabitants would kill or die for the privilege of being alone. When Kirk is busy kissing Odona, he does not notice that the ship's viewing screen has become filled with the faces of people. After leaving the bridge, Kirk hears a strange sound, sound outside the ship and opens a viewing port. To his great surprise, he briefly sees the faces of a crowd, <clears throat> which quickly fade into the stars. Kirk begins to suspect something is very wrong, but when he confronts Adona, she complains that she feels very strange, then collapses. Kirk carries her towards sick bay, sick bay, but is met by Hoden and is taken into custody. Hoden tells Kirk that Odona is his daughter, and she has become infected with the vegan cormingitis from Kirk's blood. Hoden explains that the germ-free atmosphere and increasing long lifespan on Gideon have created vast overpopulation problem and that he hopes to bring it under control by introducing disease and, of course, killing his own daughter. When Kirk asks why the population was not sterilized, Hoden says that the organs of the people of, of the planet regenerate themselves. When Kirk then asks Hoden why the people of Gideon have not practiced birth control, Hoden replies that the people of Gideon believe life is sacred and that the love of life is the greatest gift, and therefore they cannot interfere with the creation of life. Hoden tells Kirk that he must stay to provide the virus to infect the people of Gideon and bring the population under control. Kirk points out that Odona need not die and that there is no further need for him to stay since if Odona survives, her blood can provide the virus. However, Hoden tells Kirk that Odona's voluntary death at such a young age will bring forward dedicated young volunteers to also be infected. By the time Spock has discovered the two sets of coordinates which he has been provided do not match, Admiral Fitzgerald continues to refuse to let Spock beam down. Spock disobeys orders and beams down to the first set of coordinates. He discovers the exact replica to which Kirk was beamed and locates Kirk. Spock overpowers the guards, and he and Kirk beam up with Adona to the real Enterprise. As he is leaving, Spock quips to the ambassador, 
Your Excellency, please do not interfere. I already have one serious problem to resolve with upper echelons. McCoy heals Odona, and she is beamed back to Gideon, where her blood can now serve as the source of the vegan core meningitis for her people. What's the fun fact from this episode? Well, according to the Memory Alpha listing on this episode, the story for this episode was co-written by Stanley Adams, who previously played Cyrano Jones in the classic The Trouble with Tribbles. Reportedly, Adams was deeply concerned about the issue of overpopulation and had some real dis- had some casual discussions with Gene Roddenberry during the production of The Trouble with Tribbles, in which he suggested the star- that Star Trek do an episode reflecting the subject matter. This episode is evident from the result of those conversations. Adam's writing of this episode was influenced by the advice from his son, explained Adams. My son says, Dad, you're in a real position to really say something about the overpopulation problem. There are some interesting continuity issues in this episode. This is the only episode showing an exterior viewing port. The only other time a window looking outside the ship is seen is on the observation deck in the episode, The Conscience of the King. Of course, in this case, the port is not seen on the real Enterprise. The exterior viewing port from this episode is the same design as the one used to witness Marta's execution in Whom Gods Destroy. This is the second of two TOS episodes that show an empty Constitution class bridge, the other installment being in the first season, Uh, show this side of paradise. And when Kirk tries to address anyone on the ship in one of the shots showing an empty corridor, it's recycled from the episode, Is There No Truth in Beauty? Also, another shot shows an empty sick bay with a red alert uh, indicator light flashing, an an obvious pickup shot from yet another episode. So what are the compliance takeaways from this? Well, Hoden and the board or the ruling council of Gideon clearly um, are very much out of step. So uh, it also brings up the need for compliance expertise on the board. You really have to have an expert, and they needed an expert in population control. Uh, Their uh, decision to uh, literally murder the daughter of the uh, high counselor is just a horrifying example even if uh, it was going to uh, bring the population under control. Number two, how do you select your senior managers? How do you promote people up from the ranks up into senior uh, leadership? Do you do additional due diligence on them? What is their decision-making skills? Uh, Have you thought about that? Do you look at that? Uh, And it's something that is uh, unfortunately uh, needed in today's uh, corporate world. And then finally, What's the composition of your compliance team? How broadly are you set? Is it simply lawyers doing lawyer work? Do you have forensic accountants? Do you have psychologists? Do you have people outside the legal realm to help you going forward? I hope you'll join us tomorrow on Trekking Through Compliance when we take up the episode, That Which Survives. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.